Valens Research, Uniform Financial Analytics. And so with Pfizer, right, so much has been changing recently with um, everything that's going on with, uh, with biotech and pharma. But, um, and many people wouldn't ble be blamed for assuming that, quite frankly, when you look at Pfizer and the other, um, you know, and the other companies that are in that space, in the pharma space, that they're being competed away, right? That biotech is moving in and pressuring the business and everything else. And if you look at Azure Portal Metrics, you'd see the same. You'd see a company that had ROAs of basically 6% in 2013 and has 6% ROAs now, right? This company is basically, Pfizer is a cost of capital business, quote unquote, that can't actually grow and can't improve its business, right? But in reality, what we see is we see uniform accounting ROA hasn't been flat. It's actually been rising from 13% in 2013, all the way up to 19% in 2018. And it's forecast to inflect higher in 2019, even further to 2022%. I mean, to 22%, to right? And what we can see here is we can also see the market recognizes this improvement, right? Which is why we saw the step up in TSR here. That's really important because when the market misunderstands where the sustained, where the fundamental, fundamental trend of a business is, we start to lose the ability to tie back the idea of understanding a company's real performance and what it's actually producing, right? Because this is what's so important. When you look at Azure Ported Metrics, you don't actually see a representation of what the strategies the company is pursuing are doing. So you might have a view on Pfizer, that Pfizer has new drugs coming out or that they can defend against the, um, the generics that are coming out for their opportunities. And if you looked at Azure reported metrics, you would think that your thesis is wrong. In reality, when we look at the uniform accounting metrics, we can see your thesis has actually been right. They have been able to sustain and improve the profitability of their business even as Azure Ported Metrics reflects a different reality, quite frankly, a non-reality because of the problems with Azure Ported Accounting Metrics. And because of that, when you look at Pfizer, you might look at a company that is trading at a PE of 13 to 50, of 14 to 15 times, and you might say, yeah, considering that they're a stagnant business, that makes sense. In reality, when we look at Pfizer, what we see is assume that they can keep ROA high, assume that this leg down in forecasted ROA for 2020 isn't real, but let's say they can actually just, they don't grow the business, and Pfizer actually has ROA trend up towards 20%, which is kind of where it's been trending the last couple of years. Well, if I look at that, what I can see is Pfizer isn't fairly valued. Pfizer is really worth a lot more. Look, if that actually happens, Pfizer's worth 60% more than it is right now. Said differently, these white bars, right, what the market is pricing in right here, look too mess pessimistic. Pfizer looks undervalued right now. Now, but your next question might be, and it's a very reasonable question, is Pfizer undervalued or is the whole entire industry undervalued? And so with that in mind, we're actually going to look at one of the other tools that we use to understand industry-wide valuations along with a company-specific valuations. And this is what we call our quality to value scatter. And so what you're looking at with the quality to value scatter is we're actually looking at understanding what is the valuation of this company and its peers when we look at their asset base relative to their return base. And so if I look, I'm just going to hide a bunch of these, um, these names that have very negative ROAs. I'm just going to remove these from the scatter. And then I'm also going to remove this name from the scatter because it's such an outlier. So now what I have here is for mostly large cap pharma, but so for large cap to mid cap pharma, I have a scatter. And what the scatter is, is what the ROA of the company is versus what the price the market pays relative to the company's asset base. And what we can understand is there tends to be a very strong relationship between how profitable you are and what premium the market will pay on your asset base. Said differently, if you think about it, if, I, if my required rate of return as an investor is, let's say, 5%, let's say my real after-tax return that I need as an investor is a 5% return, and a company is generating a 5% return, well, reasonably, we expect that company to trade at one times as book assets. I need a 5% return. You're giving me a 5% return. Therefore, the company's assets are fairly valued at one times. If you generate a return that's two times the cost of capital, 10%, we'd expect to see a valued asset prime ratio of around two times. So normally, and right, this is important for pharma because the fact that there is all this pessimism in the space, we tend to see that there's not a stronger relationship. But normally, if we did this for the whole entire market, you'd see a trend up like this, where it would go from here all the way up to here. 
But so what we can do here is we can look at Pfizer's valuation relative to their peers when we think of their ROA and their valued asset prime to understand if, if Pfizer looks cheap or expensive relative to peers. Now there's two peers that look a lot cheaper than Pfizer, right? Just intuitively, if you have a very high ROA and a very low price to book asset ratio, then the market's multiple that it's paying on your earnings is very low. But if you're up here, right, you have a very high price to book, our valued asset prime ratio, and a very low ROA, well, that's an expensive company, right? Because for every dollar of return you're generating, the market's paying an even higher premium. Now, Superna, which I'm going to remove, and, um, and Court, right, which I'm going to remove, are very, very, very cheap businesses. But what's interesting with Pfizer is if I look... Pfizer is trading very cheap relative to its peers. When I look at how high Pfizer's ROA is, right, it's highest among this peer group that I just isolated, but it's also trading at the lower end of peers' ranges. So Pfizer doesn't just look cheap on an absolute basis. Pfizer looks cheap relative to its peers also. Balance Research, the world's leading source for uniform financial analytics.